What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 99 and we start today's episode off starting the new season with Napoli here. Uh, season number 5 here in this career mode and we've been given our budget for this season. It's £37.5 million. So for the first time during this career mode we have been given a very generous budget from the board and it's £37.5 million which is fantastic. And uh, before we even get down to spending that money we've actually been, uh, we, we've signed four players on pre-contracts of course we did this in January. Uh, those players are Bardi, a goalkeeper who's 80 rated, so already this goalkeeper can go straight into the first team. Uh, and the Stazic, of course, the former City defender. And of course, the two headline signings were Eden Hazard of Chelsea and Lucas Moura of PSG. So four incredible players, well, two incredible players and two very good players as well, come in on pre-contracts, on free transfers. And, um, you know, that's even before we spent a single penny for this year. So <laughs> getting those four players in for free is just incredible. Incredible, but uh, I'm really excited for this year. You know, I really am. I think we can definitely become a very dominant force in the Serie A. And um, it looks like we've already set up Napoli for the foreseeable future. So even if we are to leave during this year, I'm going to be very glad that we've already done exactly what we wanted to, uh, wanted to do. But uh, our main transfer targets, or our three main transfer targets of the new season with this incredible budget, are Mario Balotelli, uh, Agbona of uh, Juventus, and also, of course, one of our former players, Brian Carrasco of Millwall. Now, I should say before I start that these emails and all this business goes by pretty quickly. I've sped up the uh, clips by uh, uh, times two, so these do go by uh, pretty quickly. So if you can't keep up, I do apologize, but yeah, you know, feel free to pause the video, go back and watch certain parts, and uh, you'll be able to see all the business we do. But I'll try and keep up for you anyway. But uh, we made a bit of Balotelli straight away of Manchester United. He's a striker I really do want. Higuain's coming into his 30s now, and he's going to start decreasing very soon. So I'd like to get Balotelli, and he's of course one of the best strikers in the world in this game. He's 89 overall, and he's a which is good, so I'd definitely like to get him into my side. A lot of bids are coming in for Raphael as well, our goalkeeper, who I'm not a big fan of, so I would not be surprised to see him leave during this season. Um, also, a bid came in for Fabio here and one of our random players that was at the score when he took over. And uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach and Benfica aren't going to go back in for Raphael because the counter offers were too high. We go back in for Balotelli and we offer £20 million plus Higuain. They originally said they wanted £53 million, so I offer £20 million plus Higuain and we'll wait and see what happens there. Uh, Raphael is a transfer target for many clubs clearly a lot of the teams want to get Raphael into their side he's he's 79 overall only 27 so I'm surprised that the bids are so low but who knows maybe he will be leaving even though the uh, clubs don't seem to want to accept those counter offers but Manchester United actually accepted a 20 million pound plus Higuain deal so you know for a striker that's 89 overall only 26 and valued at uh, 53 million pounds I cannot believe they accepted a 20 million pound deal plus Higuain so that's that's a very good deal as you see uh, one of those random 50 odd rated players go to a another club there for about 50 grand but uh, United wanted to replace Balotelli if he is to leave with Lukaku but we say no to that because I really do like Lukaku and uh, Sociedad here uh, go back in for uh, Rafael but I'm not willing to sell him for any less than my valuation. Vitali's also left the club for 1.2 million pounds which is fine because he was getting on and yeah, there's no real place for him in my side. Juventus want Lukaku but we say no to that deal and uh, we also see after that we've got another transfer on for Rafael. We once again counter off it to 5 million pounds or 5.25 million pounds and also Mario Balotelli accepts the contract of 190 grand a week so the deal of 20 million pounds plus Gonzalo Higuain to United is enough to secure the signature of Mario Balotelli so he's our first signing this season with uh, the 37 and a half million pounds we were given and I know that some of you may think that's a bit of an overspend really because Higuain is an 84 rated striker a very good player but to be honest I think that's a great deal you look at those stats he looks incredible 89 overall and we still got money to spend as well so yes it is going to suck having Higuain uh, sorry no longer having Higuain but to be honest we're replacing him with a better younger striker for the future and I think we've done a very good job there we then go and offer Juventus a bid for a bono we'll see what happens there and also another bid comes in for Raphael here he's, he's wanted by so many clubs but I don't really want to let him go even if Bardi is going to be our new number one I'd still like to keep him at the club but uh, we offer uh, Millwall a lo another loan deal for Guterres the scout future star um, they accepted a loan deal last year and they accept it again so that's that's really really surprising you know he's, he's actually regarded as an important first team player at Millwall but for some reason they've accepted a loan so once again Guterres will join us on a season long loan. We put in another bid for uh, Agbona of £6 million plus uh, Raul Albiol and we also accept Guterres so he's on 30 grand a week he'll come into the club I forgot to show his stats but you will know what he looks like and um 
Yeah, I'm very, very happy with that because although he won't be a first team player this year, he will be there for cover and he's uh, certainly a very capable centre back. But uh, all these bids keep coming in for Raphael, but none of the clubs are matching the valuations. So we just keep, uh, keep ignoring them for the time being. But uh, if Raphael is to leave, I would like to sign a new player, um, a new goalkeeper as a backup goalkeeper, and pre pre preferably uh, a young goalkeeper that we can develop for the future. So Areola of PSG and Liali of Juventus are the two goalkeepers I'm looking at if we are to sell Raphael and get a replacement in. Him. Another bid comes in for Raphael, but I just decided to screw it because no one else was going to accept the uh, bids we wanted, so we just decided to reject all for the foreseeable future. But uh, another bid came in for Raphael there, but again, it doesn't meet our valuation. But Juventus have accepted the £6 million deal plus Raul Albiol uh, for Agbona here, so we offer him a contract and we'll wait and see what happens there um, because I think that um, that for us would be a very, very good deal. We then see that uh, Palmer want Bruno Avini. We counter off for £3.25 million, wait and see what happens there. And also we see here, the Palmer said that wasn't good enough. Uh, Raphael said it was too expensive for uh, Raphael. Um Sorry, uh, was that Hamburg? Said it was too expensive for Raphael. And Ogbonna accepts the contract. So it's another new signing for us this year. Ogbonna, the Juventus defender, has came in for £6 million plus Raul Albiol. Yes, he's 29 years old, so I'm sure you're probably sitting there thinking he's a bit too old, really. He'll be coming into the 30s very soon. But to be honest, he's got some very awesome stats. And I think he's a very capable centre-half. You know, our, our defence, our centre-back area was quite weak. So I'm glad to get him in. And for just £6 million plus Albiol for an 81-rated defender who, you know, he's still got at least one season before he starts to decrease. I think he's a very decent deal for us. So he'll go straight into the first team. We then look to go in for Brian Carrasco of Millwall. Uh, we offer £1 million plus Mertens because he's now into his 30s and he will decrease very soon. Uh, a transfer of then came in for Fernandez, but I don't want to sell him. So we uh, counter offer Sunderland for £12 million, but I don't think they're going to accept that counter offer. And we then go in for Di Cilio. Di Siglio, I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Uh, the Milan fullback here that can play both left back and right back. We offer them a deal and we'll wait and see what happens there. But the first preseason friendly was going to be against Bordeaux here, and we ended up playing this game. And to be honest, I simulated it. I simulate all the preseason games, and we uh, rested pretty much every single player. I just thought I'd play these players that are fringe players. Maybe they'll play good. Maybe they'll score some goals, and their form will start to improve, and therefore they will become more desirable for other clubs. But so uh, we drew that game by one goal apiece. I think we did, and also Millwall uh, weren't going to accept the deal that we offered for Brian Carrasco of one million pound plus Mertens. So we decided to uh, go ahead and counter offer that. Wasn't sure what player to offer, but eventually we just decided to put £2 million on, plus Jose Callahan, because he is also in his 30s and is going to start decreasing. A transfer offer then comes in for Bariti. We say no, there's no way we're getting uh, rid of this holding midfielder. He's, of course, a glitch player, but even so. And uh, Milan said he wanted way too much money for Di Sigilo, so I just said, forget it, we're not going to bother. But we also decided to play the second preseason friendly uh, simulator, I should say, this time away at Manchester United. And uh, they had Higuain on the bench, so clearly they don't want to use him straight away. They'd rather use Danny Welbeck, but uh, even so we played this game with another weak side and we actually ended up winning the game by two goals to one so that was quite surprising but uh, after that Millwall said the deal for Carrasco was not good enough of £2 million plus Jose Callahan. so I went back to the uh, original counter offer they wanted which was £3 million plus Mertens and uh, wait and see what happens there but a uh, transfer offer then came in for Danilo it was Southampton for £9.5 million we counter offer for £19.5 million because I thought there's no way they were going to accept that and um, well we wait and see what happens there but uh, anyway a, tra a transfer offer then comes in for Tutinho a 61 rated player that's 20 years old but straight after that Southampton accepted a 19 and a half million pound deal for Danilo I know he's a great right back but I tell you what that is an amazing counter offer there 19 and a half million pounds for that right back that could be an insane deal for us we then offer uh, Millwall 4 million pound plus Mertens for Brian Carrasco before we took on Liverpool for our third preseason friendly which we won by two goals to one uh, that 61 rated winger is now gone to um, I'm not sure who he went to but it doesn't really matter because he was useless anyway but uh, we then saw straight after that that Millwall accepted a transfer offer uh, of £4 million plus Mertens for Carrasco and Danilo has gone to Southampton for £19.5 million. So that's incredible. That is genuinely incredible. I cannot believe we have <laughs> we have sold him for that much money. I know he's a great right back, don't get me wrong, but that to me seems like an incredible deal we've just done there. So I'm very happy with that. And uh, also the deal for Carrasco was actually £3.5 million plus Mertens, but we, we can now offer him a contract. So Mertens, uh, sorry, Carrasco could be coming 
going to the club. But uh, before we get into our first game of the season, this is what the side looks like, how I've got it set up. It is absolutely incredible. Offensively, it looks in extraordinary. It genuinely does look incredibly strong. Looks like we could, uh, could score a lot of goals with this side this year. Uh, we then go back in for Di Seguilio of uh, AC Milan. We offer £10 million, pounds, uh, sorry, £14 million pounds plus Ivanovic, and we'll wait and see what Milan say, because now Danilo is gone, I would like to get a new fullback in. And of course, Di Seguilo can play left back and right back, so we'll be very good to get him in. We then offer uh, Roma a deal of £7 million plus Jose Callahan for Florenzi because he is currently thinking about leaving the club, so it could be good to get, uh, get Florenzi in for cover. But uh, we do take on Juventus in the Super Coppa for the first game of the new season with our new look Napoli side. Really, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of new players coming into this side, and um, yeah, as you as you would have seen the team lineup, I definitely think this year we have an incredibly, incredibly incredibly strong side on offense. We've got some extraordinary players. I mean, Balotelli leading the line at 89, Lucas on the right 89, Hazard on the left 88, Insigne is the attacking midfielder 82, Hamshik and Bariti are playing holding midfielder, both 85 rated each. That midfield and attack looks so strong and I genuinely believe, I mean, Hamshik has dropped down to holding midfielder, but I still think he could play there quite well. And um, this side looks so good, it really does. And I'm so excited to play with this side this season because I do believe we can score a lot of goals with them. We took on Juventus, looking to score the first goal of the game here in the Super Coppa, and we did and the goal scorer was Mario Balotelli so we brought him in for 20 million plus Higuain and it takes him just 8 million uh, sorry it takes him 8 million uh, 8 minutes for him to get his first goal in a Napoli shirt so a great goal by Balotelli to make it 1-0 here and in the 10th minute he almost doubled his tally his shot was well saved tipped onto the bar and then the follow-up shot the bicycle kick hit the bar as well so Juventus living very dangerously straight away here um, as we were looking to score the second goal of this game and we were looking so threatening. And the 31st minute here, it's uh, Marek Hamshik who gets on the ball and finds Balotelli. The pair play a lovely one-two. It's Hamshik who gets round Caceres here. Goes down the right-hand side. Nice piece of skill. Crosses the ball in. It's cleared away by Chiellini. Only as far as Balotelli who robs him and puts the ball into the bottom corner. So 32 minutes in. Balotelli with two goals. And it's Napoli to Juventus nil. And uh, from a corner here in injury time in the first half, it's crossed in towards Balotelli. It's cleared away. Only as far as Lucas. He finds Fernandez. Fernandez finds Bariti, his shot is blocked, but eventually it's cleared away, only as far as Isla. Isla passes the ball straight to Insigne, eventually it comes to Bariti, chips the ball over the top, there's Balotelli, spins around in a 360, and half volleys the ball. <clears throat> into the back of the net. So Balotelli with a first half hat-trick on his Napoli debut and for £20 million plus Higuain, I think this guy is going to be one of the steals of the season. Incredible finish by Balotelli. And uh, he made it 3-0 here on the stroke of half time. I, I love his awareness of that goal. You know, he just span around in the circle and then half volleyed it in with ease. So 3-0 to Napoli and we were just cruising in this game. And it felt so good to know Balotelli was off to such a great start. And uh, in a 48th minute, how about this? Some nice play. Really, really good passing. The ball eventually comes to Hazard. But unfortunately, Rui Patricio makes a great save. The ball goes up in the air. He gets to his feet and catches it with ease. So 3-0 was the final score. All three goals scored by Mario Balotelli in the first half and a fantastic dominant performance from Napoli and in our first game we were in our first trophy of the season so I know it's not the most coveted of trophies but to be honest I don't really care it is a trophy that's the most important thing and it just felt so good to know we were so dominant I know Juventus every time we played them we've looked so amazing and Juventus have looked so poor but even so it's still a very good achievement and to win by three goals to nil and just look so dominant was great for us as well and a clean sheet as well which is very nice because I'm not very good at keeping those but a 3-0 victory uh, over Juventus does give us our first trophy which is the Super Coppa and uh, all goals coming from Mario Palatelli I know I'm going to keep saying it all through the season but seriously £20 million plus Higuain knowing that I probably could have got him for cheaper is the most extraordinary thing but I think it's just been an incredible signing for us and with the money we've still got left to spend we could still improve on some areas in the squad and uh, this team here at Napoli could see us have a very very successful season uh, as we begin to sort of develop Napoli from a club that the AI were kind of butchering a little bit and sort of starting to uh, you know starting to let them decrease um, we've taken over the side and we have just transformed them into a, an incredible side in just you know six seven eight months it's it's extraordinary it really is so you know even if we are to leave Napoli during this season I know there's quite a few of you that want me to stay uh, but I know there's quite a few of you that want me to leave even if we are to leave Napoli say in January for example I know for a fact that this side is going to be one of the best sides in the game uh, during the whole of this series because we've set them up so well already and we still got 
money to spend so it's fantastic it really is so we win the super copper and it's our first trophy of the season and that feels absolutely fantastic the, the new napoli the new napoli if you will is off to a winning start here in this season but uh, straight after that we saw that brian carrasco has accepted the contract so a three and a half million pound deal plus mertens is enough to take brian carrasco to the stadio san paolo and i stalled it for the time i was thinking about stalling it for the time being but i did go ahead and accept it because carrasco coming in is really good for us i don't really know where he's going to play he can play right back so for the time being i've just got him sat in the side of right back um because of course that is in his listed positions he's an 81 rated player he looks absolutely incredible but i i think i might have him on the bench you know on the bench just to bring on for a bit of pace if we need him really so i, I don't really know where to play him in the side it's it's kind of annoying because our side is so offensively set up i don't really know how to play all these fantastic players you know there's lukaku on the bench he's an 82 83 rated striker so it's, it's kind of hard to fit all these great players into the side but to be honest i'm just glad to have so much cover and so many good players here i know that we're going to score a lot of goals with this napoli side during this season we went back in for Florenzi there and uh Cohn said they wanted to take bruno avini for two million pounds but i like bruno avini i know he's quite slow but he's still a very decent player but uh, we'll wait and see what happens there but uh, a bid then came in for another random player we've got in the side 66 overall 21 years old and we just accept it so he looks like he's on his way Milan wanted 21.4 million pound for De Siglio someone's got a comment and tell me how you pronounce his name because I've got no idea but uh, De Siglio here they wanted 21.4 million pounds we decided to uh, counter offer it for a little bit cheaper uh, try and give AC Milan Mesto uh, right at the bottom of your screen there we go back and uh, offer Mesto uh, plus 17 million pounds I think it was so um as you'll see here we offer Mesto who's only rated like 65 I think he is 65 overall or 62 overall even worse and he's 32 years old we offer Milan 17 million pound plus Mesto and we'll wait and see what happens there it's less than what they want but we'll wait and see what happens because there's a good chance they may accept it anyway a transfer offer then came in for Fabio and uh, it was Lazio for 7 million pounds and uh, we counter offered and we said if you give us 17 million we'll accept it because Fabio has been a great signing for just 1 million pound plus Armero he's already an 81 rated player we then see that random centre back has gone for 350 grand which is fine and we then see straight after that Lazio said they're not going to offer 17 million pounds for Fabio because it's too much and I said I don't care because he's 81 overall and he's an amazing player so I'm perfectly happy keeping him at the club and Roma once again said that the transfer offer for Florenzi was not good enough so we want to go go, uh, go back in for him <clears throat> and offer £11 million plus Jose Callahan, and we will wait and see what Roma say. But after that, we saw that AC Milan accepted a £17 million deal plus Mesto uh, for Di Siglio. And, uh, you know, he is a left-back on the game, but I know he can play right-back. He can play both uh, left-back and right-back. He's got a five-star weak foot, so either one of those positions is fine. He's Italian. He's only 24 years old, so that could be a great deal for us. And then we see that Roma accept an £11 million deal plus Jose Callahan. So, you know, Callahan into his 30s now. He's down to a 78 overall he's going to start decreasing in stats um you know that that could be a good deal for us because Florenzi's only 26 and he's got room to grow but De Siglio comes in 100 grand a week for five years on a 17 million pound deal plus Mesto and um that to me seems like a very very good deal it does mean that most of our money and most of our budget has now gone we've only got six million pound left to spend but to be honest I'm perfectly happy with that deal I think it's a great deal for us and uh, we now get a decent fullback in so instead of playing Carrasco at right back where you know we've, we've only played him there once we're not sure how well he'd do for the foreseeable future we can now play this uh, <laughs> i'm just gonna say di Siglio for the time being uh de siglio sorry de siglio uh comes in 84 rated five star weak foot uh left back playing right back he's right footed i mean he looks like a great player he's only 24 years old as well so he's clearly got room to grow probably gonna have like 86 87 potential so i'm very happy with that deal florenzi then comes in for 11 million pound plus jose Callahan. at the time i wasn't really sure whether to accept this or not because i don't know too much about him but but I know that Roma were very good last year and Florenzi was quite a difficult player to contain. He's 82 rated. He's got high, high work rates, which I love. He can play on both wings and in the centre of the park at centre mid. He's only 26 years old, 82 rated, of course. Very quick, high stamina, great technical stats. And again, I think that's a very, very good signing. So Florenzi comes in. And all of the transfers during this episode have been incredible. They really have some unbelievable transfers, some real good business. And yes, we've lost a great player in Danilo. Yes, we've lost a great player in Higuain. But I tell you what, we've replaced them with some incredible players ourselves. And we have got some great players. The last thing you see is us going for that scout future star goalkeeper there. And I took a look at Eric Dier, who's 89 overall at Millwall. So anyone that thinks I left Millwall in a mess clearly needs to rethink that. Look at Eric Dier as a stats, man. 89 overall is incredible. But uh, yeah, the last thing you'll see is uh, us pick up that scout future star goalkeeper just for cover. And um, that does end the episode off. So as always, guys, a big thank you for watching today's video. I really hope you
hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Uh, I am sorry it so much went by quickly, but that's because I need to fit it all into 20 minutes. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. That's much appreciated, and it really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode, which is episode 100, very soon.